Section 3.3, formula weights. Formula weight is the sum of the atomic weights for the atoms that are shown in a chemical formula. So if I have H2SO4 and I wanted to find the formula mass of that, I would have to look at the formula. I have H2, so I have two H's, and I go to the periodic table and the atomic mass is underneath the symbol and I will have 2 times 1 AMU, okay, equals 2. I will have 1 times the sulfur, and the sulfur is 32.1 AMU, equals 32.1. And then I'll have 4 times the oxygen, and the oxygen is 16 AMUs. Um, and then I add those up. That's the to that would be the total uh, weight of the of the molecule. A molecular mass is exactly the same for a molecule, and it's not just your mind that's confused. Everybody has the same idea. What's the difference between a formula mass and a molecular mass? Well, a formula mass is the mass of just the formula unit. There isn't um, a molecule in a salt. A salt, where, a salt is made out of cations and anions, some kind of an attractive force. And you end up with an enormous, you could have a, a piece of salt, like a piece of table salt, that's very, very tiny, tiny or very, very big, because they simply just keep adding to the structure. They just add and add and add, and the, and the, 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 uh, cube just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. A molecule is one little tiny molecule, say of water, where it's hydrogen and oxygen. There's just one water. It's not like a blob of water. But salt, you have a blob of salt. So instead of, there's not a molecule, so you just say the formula mass, so H2SO4, which is made out of positives and negatives. Anytime that you have cat, uh, cations and anions, so you have ionic bonds, it's called a formula mass. If you have a, molec a molecule like H2O, here's, here's a molecule, HCl. Well, you do it exactly the same. There's not a bit of difference. It's 1 AMU from the hydrogen, 35 and a half AMUs from the chlor chlorine, and you end up with 36 and a half AMUs. If you were to have a molecule like this, C2H4, this is ethane, uh, you would have two times 12.0, and you get that from the periodic table plus 4 times 1 mu, that's from the periodic table, multiply them and then add them together and you get a total of 28. So your number, your math is identical, but a formula mass is just the, uh, for ionic bonds and molecular for covalent bonds. So in review, a molecular weight is the sum of all the atomic weights of the atom in a molecule. So like we did a second ago, two times, now here's the, the big number from the periodic table, I suggest you use the whole one. Even though that's, it looks like a lot of digits, um, don't round up at the beginning. You only round at the very end of a problem. You don't round up all of your little steps because then your numbers will be wrong. So you look at the entire uh, atomic mass on the periodic table, and if you need two of them, then multiply that by two, and then add six times the entire atomic mass and then this is the, that's the molecular weight of, in this case, ethane. A formula weight, to, you remember, is the sum of atomic weights for all the atoms in a formula. And uh, it's called, a, uh, it would be a formula unit. It's not a molecule because it's not little discrete molecule. A formula unit can be tiny or it can be enormous as more and more of these formulas kind of add on and make a big blob. That's what would happen. So calcium, which is a positive, and chlorine, which is a negative, they come together, and they come together in a huge matrix is really what's happening. You get a big blob of calcium chloride where calcium and chloride are inside touching each other and just it just grows and grows and grows and grows. So the, 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 cl the clump of calcium chloride would just be a big clump. It would not be individual calcium chloride molecules as you would see with water. You add them up and it's and it's whatever 10 110.99 okay so this is remembering uh, ionic compounds are formula weights
okay? Um, so they do not use empirical formulas uh, and formula weights. Uh, they use formula weights, not molecular weights. So if you were to have a, co a molecular compound, molecular compounds would have a molecular weight, an ionic compound would have a formula weight, but you do them exactly the same. All right, the last thing today is percent composition. So how much percent of the whole formula unit or molecule is one of the atoms in it or one of the elements in it? So if you were to have, say, H2O, right, what is the formula weight? In this case, that's a molecule, so it would be the, it would be the molecular weight. Okay, so it's the same. Well, this would be 2 times 1, it's 1 1.0794 or whatever, but one, 2 times 1 is 2, and then 1 times 16, it's actually 15.9994, but for right now, it's okay, 16. That means the total formula weight is 18 AMUs, and let's say you want to know how much is the oxygen. Well... I look at the oxygen and I say, well, the oxygen is 16. The total oxygen weighs 16. So I would say 16 AMU divided by the total weight. So it would almost be like um, I've got 10 questions on the quiz. Eight of them are about one thing and two of them are about the other. How many percent is the, how much percent of the test is on one type of question? So I would look and there's 16. 16 divided by 18 is a, is a decimal times 100%, and that would give you your percent composition. So here's an example. What is the percent of carbon in ethane? All right, so ethane is C2H6. C2H6. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to abbreviate it right now. I'm going to have 6 times 1 is 6, that's my hydrogens. I have 2 times 12 is 24. That's my carbons. It's 24 plus 6 is 30. That's my total. All right, so you put your total here, and then you're only interested in carbon. Okay, so carbon is the 24. So you're going to put 24 on top, 30 on the bottom. You get 0.8. 24 divided by 30 is 0.8 times 100 equals... 80, and then your answer is in percentage.